So about Kelly, she's energetic and personable, which I'm sure we'll shortly find out, and uh, makes her a great educator with Bywater Solutions. Um, she's got a background in pu the public library sector, starting in technical services and moving on to a more systems-oriented librarian. And although her degree is from the University of Arizona, she's an East Coaster all the way through. Currently, she resides in Maine, works from home and travels to libraries, assisting with their migration to Koha. In addition to educating new libraries in Koha, she creates a weekly podcast with, with Jessie Zaro about Koha. The topics Kelly and Jessie cover in the podcast, Monday Minutes, range from upgrade features, contributing to the Koha community, and any cool unknown system preferences they think might deserve a, pro a profile of librarians, and they bring those stories out on a weekly basis, so I'm sure lots of you already know about them. And Jessie we've met before, so I'll keep it brief. Um, she has uh, graduate and undergraduate degrees in library science and got her MLIS from the University of South Florida. Um, she's been a law librarian, member services coordinator for an 18-county library consortium, and there she got the opportunity to work and train with libraries of all sizes and types. She's really interested in advocacy, outreach and training, as we can all tell from her work, um, and we're looking forward to hearing their talk very shortly. Thank you so much, Kelly and Jesse. We are pre-recording this as we are sadly not in New Zealand and we really wish we were, but my name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And we're here today to talk to you about really just our journey with Monday Minutes and how this has kind of grown in popularity and in what we're trying to cover. But first, I'll introduce myself. My name is Kelly McElligott, and I'm one of the educators with Bywater Solutions. And my name is Jesse Zaro, and I do marketing and outreach for Bywater Solutions, as well as education. Yes, I hope she never leaves education, Sarah, or at least somewhat. I'm constantly <laughs> learning, but we're all learners. In any position that we're in, we're constantly learning. So today we're going to talk about teamwork and doing something together, having fun, and kind of learning as we go. So we'll go to my next slide. So Jesse and I have been working together for almost four years, and we've always been, so if anyone wants to go back and look at our old, old videos on YouTube, you'll find them. But we wanted to make sure and have a goal of being able to continue to educate the users of Koha as it gets bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper. The software has gotten so large and so encompassing in the last even four years that we've been doing this, that we felt that we wanted to do something a little bit different in educating users. And also really like how people are learning. So a lot of the resources that we already have are the Koha Manual, an amazing documentation team that gets that done every release twice a year. It has screenshots, step-by-step instructions. We also have the Koha Wiki, and that has a plethora of other information useful to users, you know, reports and different equipment and different database things, things that I don't really ever associate myself with, but lots of other Koha details. And then finally, our Koha community. We're using the community and using that Koha listserv, using Bugzilla, all that information is great and great ways for the user of Koha to learn more about Koha. And we find it really important that when we're producing material, educational material for our libraries and our partners, that we constantly link back to either the manual or the wiki or somewhere on the community page, whether it's talking about a release, to make sure that that information is always included in our presentations. So again, whether it's a video or a blog post where we're documenting steps, it's so critical for the user as librarians, of course, to find that information. So where did we get that? And then that leads them back to either that manual, the wiki, or the website. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so Jesse and I got together and said, how can we do something in addition to the resources that are already out there for different users of Koha with different learning styles and make it engaging and fun at the same time? So there we are. We're in New Zealand. Hi, New Zealand. <laughs> um, and really, it's, it's about um, coming together and working together. We have such a huge Koha community. And before the pandemic, we could all be in the same room and talk Koha and have a great time and have those relationships as we go to our separate corners of the world, but still feel together. So Jesse and I don't live anywhere close to each other, but we work together and have fun having that common bond of, um, of Koha. And truly, what the community means to us is truly a team. So no matter if our library is here in the United States or in India or in New Zealand or in China or in Alaska in the United States, you know, we all work together as a team. And sharing that community information is really important to us as a company. Absolutely. And I think that when we do it with each other or we bond over this, we're creating conversations and relationships. And I know that we've built on many great ideas with each other throughout the, the community itself. But remember, have fun. And we definitely have fun. We definitely have fun. <laughs> so in this presentation, we're, we're going to share our objective, our journey. We've been doing Monday Minutes for over a year now. So we feel pretty we feel pretty good and some of the tools we use and maybe you'll get a, a nice little, little blooper reel as well. So really our main objective was to take one thing in Koha, break it down, demonstrate it, talk about use cases and do it in less than 10 minutes. This was really crucial for us in the beginning because we looked at our statistics and saw that some of our videos were dropping off where people were just watching like the first three to five minutes and then, and then dropping off. So we thought if we would focus these shorter videos on essentially one thing, break it down and, and try and get under that five minutes, 10 minutes max, we thought this would be a good way to kind of grab the attention of people, focus it on different modules, and then really get that information out there. Yep. Yep, so we, that's what, that was our goal. So the three things that we really wanna talk about today, keep it short, as Jesse said, keep it original. So make it something that is either, something that we're not talking about as much, something new and fresh, and then also keep it relatable. What librarians all around the world are using Koha for right now. The pandemic is a great, a great um, description of how that is working is we've kind of modified how we've done this because um, there are things that, yay, the Koha community created as we entered this pandemic to help everybody. And we wanted to push that out as fast and as furiously as we could to help everybody. Okay, keep it short. As Jesse said, this is a pretty nice graph. As Jesse said, it's all about time. And we wanted to get information to the Koha users in the shortest amount of time so we kept their attention. Um, it really is, look at, you can see average view duration is three minutes. So I mean, we're all busy. We all have things to do and we mm -hmm. want to make sure that we're pushing that information out there as fast as possible. We love looking at statistics as librarians, so make sure if you have any existing data out there, look at it and see what that average time is and, and kind of start, use that as a starting point um, to, you know, to launch your new material. Yeah, and this, is, this was a challenge for us because Koha, as I said earlier, is such a deep pool. We're, we have caught ourselves going, okay, let's break this into two, two scenario, two videos because we want to show it all, but we know we're going to lose some people and we don't want to do that. So um, here's a nice quote from somebody that we all probably know. All we have to do to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. So we appreciate anyone who wants to watch these videos. We love you for that. Um, so we're trying to, again, 
understand that everyone's time is important. Keep it original. So we have done a lot of different things. Um, we've had various guests. Yeah. So we've had our partners. Um, we've had Lizette from Koha US, which is also another partner. Um, we've gotten to do things about Koha, using Koha, learning more about Koha. And then we've also pulled in community things. So how users of Koha can contribute to Koha, to it to the community itself, mm -hmm. giving back, just really getting that information out to um, the users is really important to us. You know, a few of the Monday minutes that we did focused on like creating a Bugzilla account. We kept it short. The next week we talked about searching Bugzilla. We talked about how to file a bug on Bugzilla so people could watch, you know, in three separate videos and truly understand like how things work. So it's really important to us, not only that our users understand how to use Koha, but also know how to give back, you know, to the Koha community and, and really give feedback, help sign off on patches or tests, whatever it may be. And, and we want to make them feel that they are part of that Koha community. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to, we put this all in a big pot and we said, let's make sure we are capturing a lot of this week by week. So we've made a short little quick clip of some of our guests that have joined us in Monday Minutes. Hi, good morning and welcome to Monday Minutes with Kelly and Jesse. I'm Kelly. And I'm Jesse. And this week we're going to be talking with special guest Andrew about reports and account lines in Kuha. Welcome, Andrew. Good morning. Hello. And this week we have a very special guest with us from the Central Kansas Library System, Mary Beth. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. Exciting. So Mary Beth is joining us today for our Monday Minutes to talk about GDPR. And Kelly, tell us what that is. G and this week we have a special guest with us. Hi, Nick. Hi, I'm Nick, one of the developers at Bywater. We're happy to have you here. Nick is going to show us one of the exciting new features for Koha, which is the integration of Hoopla. Fabulous guest with us this week, Lizette from the Leyta County Library District. Hi, Lizette. Thanks for having me. Yeah, excited to have you. Thanks for joining us. So Lizette is the current president of Koha US, and we thought we'd have her on here to talk about all the fabulous things that Koha US does and some of the ways you can become active with the Koha US community. We have a fabulous guest with us this week, Kyle Hall, and he is going to be talking to us about all the hype, the curbside plugin. Yes. Welcome, Kyle. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Tell us, Kyle, how did this whole thing get started? See, and this week we have another wonderful guest, Liz. Hi, Liz. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Hi. Liz is joining this week, so we can talk to you a little bit about hair. Yeah. Um, this Very is good. a. <laughs> <It's been awesome. laughs> that was fun. So the, it's been so great for us to bring in not only members of the Bywater team, but members of the Koha community to have them share their experience and their knowledge. And it really shows true collaboration. So if there's a way that you can bring, you know, partners in libraries, it's a great way to show that. We went back into our little archive to find out our most popular tutorial videos. And believe it or not, as Jesse talked about, we did a one on Bugzilla. So, you know, just how to use Bugzilla, searching, creating an account, adding comments. So engaging the Koha community by showing them how to get involved. And that shows how important that is to a lot of Koha users is that, you know, that popular tutorial video. SMS, SMS was a hot winner. It was a yeah. hot winner. Um, it's a free service, so maybe that's why it's international. So it's a great way to connect to your patrons um, without using email. And then finally, OPAC. Everyone wants to make their OPAC beautiful, and so we showed them how to use public lists to populate cover flow on the OPAC. And I want to say that we had Lucas in on that one, but I can't quite remember. I think we did. <laughs> Lucas has been a very... Um, popular guest. He comes back a lot for the customizing, 
customizations. But again, it, it was, it's super great to go back and look at what people are watching. And he's a current community release maintainer. Exactly. I don't know how he does it. Um, there are, there are last of the three tips, keep it relatable. So suggestions. Our partners will send us ideas, will email us, will send us um, chats through our website, we'll put it in Slack. So lots of ways that we hear from people on what they would love to see our Monday Minutes. Also our colleagues will say to us, wouldn't this be great Monday Minutes? Um, going into the library community around what's going on in the library community. So the pandemic, bulk updating due dates, um, using that curbside plugin. What are our users doing right now um, and using Koha in what way? And then we've really tried to strive on vari the variety. So, you know, we cataloging one week and then maybe something in the OPAC. So giving a nice mixture of different areas in the Koha um, system has been really great to make it sure that we're not pigeonholing one area of the user and not using everybody. Perfect. Tools. So some of the things that we have worked um, with you doing this um, project of ours, Zoom. We're using Zoom today as we Zoom from our house, projecting this out to you all. It's a great um, software. We, we have played around with Google Meets and we think that that could fit, fit our needs, but right now we're using Zoom primarily. We use Camtasia to do our editing of our videos, whether it's cutting out something, adding in a short little link or a um, star to say like highlight something in there. This allows us to do all of our editing. There are some free resources out there, of course, um, that you can use like Screencast-O-Matic or Screencastify. Those are some free options that you can use to um, essentially record and edit uh, for free. We use YouTube to, to house all our videos so we can organize them by playlists in different areas of Koha. So that's a great tool and Canva, which I believe is, is free to a degree um, to create our little Monday minutes graphics. So we use that for that purpose. And then of course, Koha, open source software is what we use too. <laughs> but overall, the one thing that we want to say using Koha, we do it every day. We love it. And we wanted to bring the fun in to our day-to-day -day work. So we get to Zoom, make recordings, send them out to you, and we've put together a little, um, a little blooper clip so you can see one, one recording and how well we cannot do it. So buckle up. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week in and this and this week we're going to show you how to customize the social media icons that show in your iPod. I mean, seriously, what in the world is going on with us? We're gonna do it. I have, a, I have a great feeling about this. Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. <laughs> I hear a mess. I need to. <laughs> we get the giggles quite often. Okay. <laughs> Hi, good morning and welcome to. And then we just can't wait. Tell John we're at cake fire. It's, not, it's like the easiest thing. That's what Donna said. She's like, this, the, the, the easiest ones are always the ones that are the. Yeah, or just like stuff. <laughs> And there's our mic drop. So we, we definitely get the giggles quite often. If you find a teammate that you can relate with and find that good relationship that you can educate and have fun with it, 
you've really found a match. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. We have gotten better, but then there are days like that where we're like, we just can't win. So it's about having fun and just and doing it together. Those, those times will happen and you can edit them out. Like when you say the IPAC instead of the OPAC. <laughs> so what have we learned along the way since we've been doing this for over a year? Make it a priority. We all have busy yeah. schedules. You know, it, it's as simple as um, putting it on the calendar. And that's something I'm, I work on trying to contribute to the Koha documentation team. Add it to the calendar. Make it a consistent thing. Do it every week. If, again, if you find a teammate that you can work with, that's even better because they're going to hold you to that schedule. Um, consistency. We stop taking holidays off. So we wanted yeah. to make sure that came out every Monday because people wanted to see it. So once we started it, we didn't want to disappoint people. Take it slow. Now we emphasize how we wanted to keep this short. Like we wanted to keep our video short. So we kind of want to get a lot out there, mm -hmm. but we realized that we need to break it down and slow down. And we have 100% at the end of a recording said, we have to do this again because we are rushing. We're trying to get too much information across or we're not doing enough detail. So take it slow. Again, I'm like a broken record. Koha is so encompassing. There's a lot going on and we want to share that, but we can't do it in a really short video. So break it down, take it slow. And then also that those rotatable topics, making sure that we're covering all the areas in Koha. Maybe, you know, throwing in a cereals every once in a while is good because we want to make sure we're engaging those librarians as much as we're engaging our circulation librarians. Monday Minutes has given us the opportunity to give back to the Koha community and to educate users potentially around the world. And that's, that means a lot as the librarian in us that we want to help others. And that's the, the key. Give to you, take back, whatever you want to say, that's what we're here for, is to help educate the users. And one thing Kelly and I didn't say in our introductions, we were both librarians before we came to the Bywater team here uh, as educators. And it's important to us to not only share that knowledge, but make sure when we're presenting that knowledge that we provide that best learning opportunity for our users out there. And that's really important to us. Absolutely, absolutely. We have one more qu quote from somebody from New Zealand. So everything I've ever thought about doing has been in some sense about helping people. And that's really what we do as librarians, what we do for the Koha community hopefully is help people. Um, and this, this, kind, this quote really touched me and we're really, again, sad that we couldn't be there and yeah. with y'all. Um, so thank you all for watching. And we're here for questions. Thank you. Thank you.